Hey guys, uh, so I was um, reading, not reading, I was watching this sermon, this this expository sermon on Exodus by a, a guy named Timothy Keller, who I think is really an awesome preacher. And it was very insightful, and I just wanted to give you some of my notes on that sermon here. Um, what he talked about basically was the story of the Exodus, the second book of the Bible, right? When God delivers his chosen people, the Israelites, from slavery in Egypt, that story is, it serves as a visual aid in understanding how we as Christians relate to God ourselves as individuals. And I thought that that was very, very interesting. He, and it's, it's almost, it's analogous to how we experience our relationship with God. And I just wanted to kind of talk about that for, for just a moment here. So we know God shears, saves us by his sheer grace. We're saved by his grace, right? And the idea here is he saved us and now we ought to obey him. So it's not we obey him and then he saves us. It's he saves us, now we obey him. He saves us by his grace. Our decision in the matter is just we let go and let him carry us to heaven right instead of going our own way letting go trusting jesus as the only one that can save us not trusting in our own way of getting salvation or anything else it's just jesus that can save us when we believe that he carries us to heaven he saves us when we're already saved by jesus upon you know our 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 acceptance and faith in him we have a calling to obey him. But notice how it's not the obedience first and then the salvation. And that's how many, many other religions work, but it's not how the Christian faith works. And so looking now specifically at this story in Exodus, um, God told the Israelites that he carried them out of Egypt on eagles' wings. And so what that's implying, what that's basically saying here is that God is their sole reason for escaping Egypt. The Israelites did nothing to get rid of slavery or, or get saved from their slavery. They were not powerful enough to escape. And God told them that since he brought them out of slavery on eagles' wings, they should obey him. The sequence was, in this story, grace and then obedience. It's very interesting how that is, is just like how our relationship with him works, right? Not obedience and then Grace, it's deliverance from Egypt before they get to Mount Sinai. Before they receive the commandments from God. And so it is with our salvation and our Christian life, God saves us and then we ought to obey. Um, so the, the story of Exodus is, is a perfect visual aid for understanding the gospel. Uh, then I also I, I observed here that, that Keller goes on to describe how terrifying God God really is to us as sinners. Um, we, if we were to really take a look at ourselves and realize the extent of our moral depravity, we would, and, and we observe that, we examine ourselves and we, we observe that in light of a perfect and holy God of utter power, Right? We would experience a terror and a shock so debilitating that it would it would kill us, right? Observing ourselves in the presence of the Almighty God of perfection, the Creator of the universe, we would pale in comparison, and we would we would die. So it's you know first of all, God is not just a warm fuzzy, right? He's a God of power, a God of wrath, right? And we know that. We know that. So yeah, if we were to if we were to understand the true extent of our depravity and observe that in light of the perfection and the power and the beauty of God, we would experience terror so debilitating that it would kill us. We would experience this self-quake, right? Like an earthquake, you know, utter utter destruction, but within ourselves, right? Oops. Uh, and that's analogous to the storms and fires described in the in the Exodus story as well. Um and so, fortunately, that same God of ultimate power
power and beauty of which we pale in comparison, is also a God of mercy and grace. He's a God of justice. His judgment comes, but his mercy and grace comes to all those who respond to that judgment with repentance and turn to him. And so, of course, Jesus, enter in Jesus Christ, the ultimate mediator, the advocate with our Father, God. Jesus is God coming into our human realm, becoming a human being, saying, you know, we as human beings came nowhere near to fulfilling the righteous law, the law. So Jesus comes in, he fulfills that law perfectly, lives the only perfect human life anybody ever has. And then, interestingly enough, suffers the wrath of God still. Suffers the wrath of God, though he was righteous. His his righteousness is attributed to all those who have faith in him. And the wrath and judgment of God is put on Jesus Christ. And... When Jesus was on the cross, before he died, there was a shaking of the earth with a terrifying storm. And then Jesus cried out, Father, why have you forsaken me? In that moment, Jesus experienced the judgment and wrath of God and it killed him. He experienced the terror and wrath of God that we sinners would experience if if fully exposed to him. He experienced that in our place and his blood cries out to the Lord for mercy on the sinners because he endured the judgment of God, destruction, and death. Now, as people who have faith in Jesus Christ, we can encounter God without experiencing death and terror that would happen if the, such as if the, if the Israelites approached Mount Sinai in that story of, in Exodus. Because we have Jesus as our ultimate mediator. So, in Exodus, Moses was a mediator for the Israelites between them and God. Jesus is the ultimate mediator that allows us to find God as broken human beings and receive his forgiveness. Without Jesus as our mediator, we could not exist in the presence of God without dying after becoming fully aware of our utter depravity and malice. Jesus peeled back the veil of God and allows us to have an intimate relationship with him in which we seek to worship him by obeying his commands, by being fervent in prayer, and by consuming his word. We do all these things because God has already saved us by his grace. Again, his grace comes first and our pursuit of a relationship with him flows from that. Our blessing is that we become his treasure and we find our treasure in him. We become a nation of priests treating, no, treating one another with genuine respect and charity and spreading his word to all who need it. So I hope that that is encouraging to anyone, really. Um, this, the story of Exodus is an example of God's power and how our salvation, our deliverance from death and destruction and slavery to sin, is nothing that we can conjure up on our own strength. We need God. The wonderful thing is God is accessible to us. We have the biblical testimony right at our fingertips. We have prayer, fellowship with other believers. We have access to God. We're saved by faith, not by our own works. Just like how God carried the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt on eagles' wings. So I, I don't know. I hope that that helps and provides a good um, way of understanding how this all works because um, it's very important to understand. We're not to obey God out of this coercion, you know, this fear that we're going to maybe not be accepted by him. But we, we obey him because we love him and we want to be his treasure and treasure him and receive that blessing. So that's it. All right. See you later.